The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. I'm here. With John Leonetti. That broadcast school has really paid off. Deacon Mark Campbell. Yeah! Mark Amadeo. Ooh, yeah! And Deacon Tony Valdez. Good morning. I'm Deacon Mark Campbell. Thanks for joining us this morning. And for John Leonetti, as I am, along with Brady Graham and Deacon Tony Valdez. It's the Catholic Morning Show. And uh, well, we, we've got a great one in store for you today. We have uh, kind of our regular Thursday routine, as uh, I like to uh, view it. It's, you know, it's not like we go on autopilot because we, we explore different topics each and every week, particularly during this first segment when we have Deacon Randy Keel on to give us a preview of our Sunday Mass readings. Uh, we generally will take a look at the first or second reading. More often than not, Deacon Randy gives us a little bit of both. This Sunday, of course, the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. And uh, we look forward to that conversation coming up here, but even before the first break. So you'll want to just hang tight with us this morning here. It is Thursday, May 23rd, a beautiful day. Of course, in the, we're still talking about uh, some of the recovery going on in, in, in and around the state. We'll touch upon that in the news. And then uh, we will look at sports and weather. But then coming up at 7.15, it's the Ask a Priest segment with Father P.J. McManus. And uh, it, that is a, a conversation that Father P.J. had with John before he left town. So we'll bring you that conversation. And they will also be looking at uh, the topic of uh, this upcoming Sunday, the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Then in the second half hour, Dr. Bud Marr, who was our Man Up speaker just, uh, just a, a little over a week ago. And he gave a great presentation on Vatican II. But today he's going to be talking with John about the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And if you don't know Dr. Bud Marr, he serves over at Mercy College of Health Sciences, and uh, he's a convert to the Catholic faith and just a a, a great um, man of uh, of wisdom and testimony of living a life that is uh, just in constant pursuit of the truth and beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So a great show today. You're going to want to stick around for all of it. We have our saint of the day, of course, also in the second half hour. So a jam-packed hour that uh, will go by quickly, I'm sure. And before we go by any further, let's go to Deacon Tony Valdez to start with a morning offering. God, our Father, we offer you our day. We offer you all our thoughts, words, joys, and sufferings in union with the heart of Jesus. Holy Spirit, be our guide and strength today so that we may witness to your love. Mary, Mother of Jesus in the church, pray for us. St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, protect us. Amen. Amen. Uh, Let's take a look now at news that's making headlines. News this morning brought to you by Skeffington's Formal Wear. Learn more at skeffingtons.com. Nearly a third of the state sustained some level of damage damage during Tuesday's severe storm outbreak uh, that uh, saw many tornadoes touch down throughout the state. And on Wednesday afternoon, Governor Kim Reynolds issued a disaster proclamation for an additional 17 counties, including Blackhawk, Buena Vista, Butler, Cedar, Clinton, Dubuque, Fayette, Franklin, Hancock, Humboldt, Iowa County, Jackson, Mills, Muscatine, O'Brien, Polk, and Story. Following Tuesday night's uh, declaration, this brings the total number of counties eligible for uh, assistance to 32. The disaster proclamation activates the Iowa Individual Assistance Assistance Grant Program, as well as the Disaster Case Advocacy Program for storm victims. Pope Francis has recognized the miracle attributed to the intercession of Blessed Carlo Acutis, paving the way for him to become the first millennial, millennial saint. The recognition of the second miracle attributed to Kudus' intercession makes it possible that he could be canonized during the Catholic Church's 2025 Jubilee year. In a decree on May 23rd, Pope Francis approved the miraculous healing of a 21-year-old girl from Costa Rica named Valerie Valverde, who was near death after seriously injuring her head in a bicycle accident while studying in Florence in 2022. The Italian computer coding teenager who died of cancer in 2006 is known for his great devotion to the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. 
Highways and airports are likely to be jammed the next few days as Americans head out for the Memorial Day weekend. A A, uh, tri- AAA, I should say, uh, predicts this will be the busiest start of summer weekend in nearly 20 years, with 43.8 million people expected to travel at least 50 miles from home between Thursday and Monday. The Transportation Security Administration says up to 3 million might pass through airport checkpoints on Friday alone. And this is just a sample of what is to come. U.S. Airlines expected to carry out a record number of passengers this summer. Their trade group estimates that 271 million travelers will fly between June 1st and August 31st, breaking the record of 255 million set, you guessed it, just last summer. Let's go to Mark Gamadeo now with a scoreboard update. In sports on your Thursday morning, last night, high school boys, Class 4A, sub-state final soccer, and it was second-ranked Dowling Catholic punching their ticket to the boys' state soccer tournament next week. Dowling defeated Ames by the score of 5-0 at Dowling Stadium last night in West Des Moines. The Maroons ranked second in Class 4A, improved their record to 17-2, and and they'll play this Wednesday, May 29th, in the first round of the boys' state soccer tournament. Also qualifying, number one, Johnston, Ankeny, Waukee Northwest, and West Des Moines Valley as five CIML teams qualified for state. Yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, all the Midwest teams were in action on Wednesday in the National League. Atlanta down the Chicago Cubs by the score of 9-2 to two at Wrigley Field. In Miami, it was the Marlins defeating the Milwaukee Brewers by the score of one to nothing. In the American League in Kansas City, the Royals defeated the Detroit Tigers by the score of eight to three. And in Toronto, the Blue Jays defeated the Chicago White Sox by the score of nine to two. And interleague play, it was the completion of a suspended game in St. Louis. And in game one, St. Louis down Baltimore three to one. And in game two, it was the Cardinals defeating Baltimore by the score of five to four. And in Washington, D.C., it was the Minnesota Twins defeating the Washington Nationals by the score of 3-2. to two. Triple-A baseball yesterday, it was game two of the Iowa Cubs' six-game homestand. The I-Cubs defeated the Indianapolis Indians by the score of 8-7 to seven at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines, snapping a four-game losing streak by the Iowa Cubs. Game three of their six-game series is tonight. Indianapolis at the Iowa Cubs' first pitch at 6-30 at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines. And last night, game one of the Western Conference Finals in the NBA playoffs. And it was the Dallas Mavericks defeating the Minnesota Timberwolves 108-105 to in Minneapolis. Dallas leads that best seven series one game to none. And with your Thursday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And Brady, what do we have to look forward? What do I have to look forward today at the St. Vincent de Paul uh, Chip in for Charity Golf Classic today? Well, I, I would say you're looking at Sun Deacon Mark. So that yes. is uh, much better than what we were looking at. Yes. Well, and it, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you get through yeah. the forecast there because uh, what yesterday was just an absolutely beautiful day. I was down in Oskaloosa visiting uh, some friends of, of Iowa Catholic Radio and supporters of uh, KFMH, our affiliate down there. And uh, it was just a gorgeous day. And that's a, that's a sweet little town down there in, in Oskaloosa. And, you picked uh, the right day to go down. I, I did, and, and it's going to flow right into today, but uh, there are some changes in the it, forecast. Yeah, Weather Today is brought to you by Construction Professionals. You can learn more at cpcustomhomes.com. For today, we are looking at those sunny skies and highs in the upper 70s. Tonight, mostly cloudy conditions with showers and thunderstorms that are likely after midnight and lows in the low 60s. Your chance of rain is at 80%. And then on Friday, mostly cloudy with showers and thunderstorms likely in the morning. Highs in the low 70s, chance of rain also at 80%. Currently in Des Moines, 59 degrees. Ames and Marshalltown, 56. And Fairfield, 57 degrees. And that's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Back to you, Deacon Mark. Thank you, Brady. And let's uh, go now to uh, uh, somebody who's going to blow us into the weekend as we celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Good morning, Deacon Randy Keel. Uh, good morning, Deacon Mark. <laughs> yes. So Moses said, this is why you oh, must yeah. now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God and in the heavens and above and on the earth below and that there is no other. What do we have to look forward to this weekend? You know, in, in this portion of Deuteronomy chapter four, we have such foundational, as I said, this, such foundational theologies that are supported from this portion of Scripture, and I'd just like to reflect on a few 
You know, when we loosely say to someone, you know, I give you my word, what we're saying to that person is, I'm going to follow through with my word with action. And if they say, well, what does he believe? Well, look at the way he behaves. The way he behaves describes what he believes. There's a theology that comes to us in understanding God that comes from this portion of Scripture that that's about when, when God speaks, he acts, and however he acts is reflected back in how we are to think about God. So he speaks, he acts, he acts, he speaks. We see that theology of God. He never speaks and then doesn't act, and he does in all his actions, it doesn't reflect what he would also speak. That's a foundation of where we can come to understand in our theology of practicing Christians that faith and works go together. This is one of the foundations of it. That's one of the five theologies that comes from Deuteronomy. Another one is Revelation. We understand the human's need to hear the voice of God talk to us about life. We, we have that need come to us from this. It's reflected in this. Another portion is the monotheism, that there is one God that you just mentioned. And the last one that comes out, the last part of theology that's clarified for us here, is that there is an exact distinction between the creator and the creature. We were created in the image of God, but we are not like God. There are massive distinctions because between God and man. So when we think about the God who speaks to us through the fire and through the wind and from the depths of the sea, the God who brought us through the, the, the Dead Sea, the God who revealed, able to rescue Israel from Egypt, no other God in history has ever, ever come close. And that's what Moses is saying to people. Do you get it now? <laughs> that's, that's kind of a good way for us to, hey, folks, do you get it now? But that's our prayer for ourselves. Lord, help me to continue to also get it as I live my life. That's that. That's actually a lot of fun. It, it, to, the, how how you stated that there, because I think you know. It's so the the Old Testament is always a precursor to the New Testament. And how many times does Christ, in the words of the Gospel, uh, almost echo the same thing? You know, how long must I endure you? How how long must you know? How many times do I have to say it before it makes sense to you and you come to understand who I am? And again, speaking as Christ would, who I am, and, and that I am here for you, right? Ah, just and, uh, yeah. And as we come to the Sunday, the solemnity of the Holy Trinity, that's that's it. We'll hear in the Gospel this Sunday also, and I will be with you always. Yes, that's that's the reflection of his, the person of God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit being with us always. And because he says, you know, like, how long will it take you to understand? Forever, and I will be with you in every breath of the way. Mm. Deacon, always good stuff. And this is, this is just such a, I think, a fun time of year as we go through these uh, series of Sundays with these uh, a series of solemnities. Uh, which we, we place, you know, high on the counter, especially it helps us ease back into ordinary time, uh, which is not so ordinary, but to, or ordinary in the in the sense of the life of the church. Uh, it's, right. It's, it's just, right. just very, 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 very rich. Anything else we should know before uh, I ask you to pray? I, I think one last thing, and I'll reflect on this, Mark. We so often um, wonder about what is God's will for my life. Could we also, because of this scripture, could we now look and see, oh, now we see what God's will is for life. Ah. It's so that we know him. And as we know him, we act accordingly to the mandates that he has given us. That is what the faith life is. It is a life of obedience out of our worship of him. Our worship of him is reflected in our be obedience, and our obedience is reflected in our faith, and our faith is reflected in knowing the Word of God. I hope my good friend Mike is listening, because that just nails on the head the the, the, the central theme of the conversation he and I were having yesterday. If not, I'm going to go back and uh, make sure they tune back into uh, what you just said. Because that, uh, that 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 just touched a, a, a special place in my heart, and I know as oh, you do good. each and every week, you uh, you touch the hearts of our listeners. Deacon, would you pray with us? I will. 
And I pray that, that this this knowledge that comes to us through the Word turns into action by the power of the Holy Spirit given to us that we would not walk according to our own will, but, Father, according to your will, and that we would be bringing you glory and honor in every breath that we take. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. God bless you, Deacon. We'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Thank you, Mark. All right. He's Deacon Randy Kill, doing as he does every day. And uh, you might hear me just, you know, accentuating uh, golf themes this morning because uh, that was a perfect tee shot to get us set up for uh, for the weekend as we get ready for this solemnity of celebrating the Most Holy Trinity. We're going to take a short break right after this. John Leonetti had a great conversation with Father P.J. McManus and uh, has some questions that you will hear the answers to about this solemnity coming up this this weekend. I'm Deacon Mark Campbell. The time is 7.15. It's the Catholic Morning Show. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. This is Iowa Catholic Radio. Connecting listeners to Christ. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, an authorized independent agent for Walmart Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Learn more at 515-226-2111 or cindyschulte.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the law offices of Amanda T. Adams. Catholic owned and operated, Amanda offers a variety of family legal services, including adoption and guardianship. Learn more at amandatadamsjdlaw.com. Support provided by Divine Treasures, a Catholic book and gift store serving the Des Moines community since 1992. Divine Treasures, 5701 Hickman Road, Des Moines, 515-255-5230. Thank you, Divine Treasures, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here. I'm Deacon Mark Campbell along with Brady Graham, Deacon Tony Valdez. It is the Catholic Morning Show. We're going to go right now to the conversation that uh, John had with Father P.J. McManus, as we do every Thursday for the Ask the Priest segment. Now, I know uh, last week, you know, I I put out a call for some questions when I was hosting, and and I had over 20 questions submitted. And uh, those have been been cataloged, and, and we will get to as many of those questions as possible over the upcoming weeks. But I know this week, John and Father P.J., uh, we're really trying to focus on this solemnity, which, uh, as somebody just said to me, is like, I- I've never even heard of this uh, this feast day. And so if you haven't heard of it, or it's something that's fairly new to you, or uh, again, maybe you've glossed over it in, in your life of faith, hopefully this conversation between John Linetti, Father P.J. McManus will shed some light on it. Let's go to it right now. All right, with me right now, Father P.J. McManus, Pastor of Christ the King in Des Moines. Hello, Father. Good morning, Johnny. We have our Ask Father P.J. segment, and we got a theme here because uh, this Sunday is Trinity Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about the Trinity here for this segment, and we'll just start it off with, I think, a question a lot of people want to know. I've heard people say that the Trinity isn't in the Bible. Where does it come from? Yeah, so it's entirely true that the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. Um, neither is the word physics or chemistry or m- many other things that we use in gravity, in assume, or gravity right? right? So, so, so th- th- the word itself is not uh, especially special, except that this word was developed by the church to talk about what it saw in the Bible, or maybe better to talk about what it had experienced in the person of Jesus in his earthly life. And then, um, and, and, and then in the age of the church. And so the Trinity is is simply the the sort of grammatical shorthand that we have for the way that God relates to God's self and therefore the way that God relates to the rest of us, that God exists as three individual persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but that there are not three gods, but one God. Beautiful. Um, we'll go on. Well, you so we'll keep going. So, 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 so the idea basically here is right. I, I, I think I think, frankly, what, what runs a lot of these questions often is a kind of. Um, modernist or uh, or a certain kind of protestant objection which which reads the bible like it's a book that sort of drops out of the sky without mm-hmm. any kind of context and um and and without a relationship to the community that receives it and that's not the way the bible developed 
secular scholars acknowledge that like this this is a this is a book that develops over a long period of time in the context of several different believing communities who come together to to create the the document that we now recognize as the bible mm-hmm. but that lived experience which is recorded in the new testament and then in the uh, in the fathers of the church is that in the person of jesus those first disciples who were all faithful jews recognized god present in a man in a way that they had never thought possible and because of that jesus is called god in the gospels and all over the epistles which are older um and 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 receives worship so so we're told to worship jesus jesus allows thomas and others to worship him individually personally and that um that requires an explanation if god is not more than one thing mm-hmm. um likewise in the age of the church the church's experience of the Holy Spirit and of the action of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church uh, suggested, revealed to the to, to the early church that God that God relates to God's self differently than we relate to ourself, hmm. and so the language of Trinity was developed to talk about precisely that dynamic. Why does any of that matter? Why, what what relevancy should the Trinity have on my life? Well, here's an interesting little bit. Um, there's no that, 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 that it might seem abstract or remote to us, but in history, at least this has been significant enough that Arabic uh, resisted the use of the word person for like 12 or 1500 years because the language of personhood was invented to talk about the Trinity, too. Hmm. So in a certain way, you only get human rights by developing the doctrine of the Trinity. That's a lot longer haul than we've got the time for this morning. But the reason it matters, right, is because what God is or how God is reveals to us the nature of existence. We're part of existence, but we're not over and above and through it in the same way that God is. And so coming to understand God better does matter. The reason this matters for us in a real specific way is because God lives in the context of a relationship. So we Americans especially um, prioritize our independence, value our individualism, um, and those are real values. They're not unimportant, but they're not absolute values. Um, the clo- the closest you're going to get to an absolute value like that is going to be something like interdependence or what we call charity, which is what binds the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together. And this is what enables us through Jesus, for us human beings, to have a relationship back to God. Beautiful. Second question comes in. Uh, I've heard it said Jesus is God, but also that Jesus is God's Son. Mm-hmm. How can that be true? Both. Yeah. So uh, Jesus is both God, the son and the son of God. Uh, by nature, uh, the second person of the Trinity is begotten of the father. That is, 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 um, is, is sunned from all eternity. Uh, but in time, he becomes the son of God in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Um, by taking on a human nature and living a real human life and dying a real human death. And so p- part of the difficulty probably is with the language of sonship specifically, mm-hmm. like the, you, we're using the, the, the same word in two slightly different ways there. Um, but the church received this uh, in this way on purpose precisely because that, that, that family tie from father to son was so essential for the ancient Hebrews, for the Jews, um, still is today in important ways. Uh, and, um, and, and, and it parallels the kind of relationship that we're meant to have with God. So what Jesus, this is the great, this is the great teaching of the, uh, this, this is the mystery of the faith. We have the opportunity by grace to experience what Jesus knows by nature. So the, the kind of relationship that the son has with the father is made accessible to us by the act of God's grace and which we received most effectively through the sacraments, which is why the sacraments are so important and why the sacraments lead us ultimately into communion with the blessed Trinity. Hmm. Hmm. Is this something that again, we we should be calling Jesus, uh, you know, the son of God is there, is there a correct uh, title that we should, you know, be um, relating to him in prayer or is Jesus son of God, anything? I mean, there's like 10,000 titles probably for Jesus, right? But, uh, you know, uh, some are better than others. Some are more fitting at particular moments than others. Mm -hmm. What I would say is good for us, though, is if we notice that the language that we use um, around or towards uh, Christ in prayer um, is somehow missing what we know to be an essential element, um, then it's often good to add those 
to, 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 to utilize other language so that so that we're more conscious of the bits that we often forget. So a good example of this is in the in the West, the ordinary way that we tend to close our prayers is through Christ, our Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. The ordinary way that the prayers end in most of the Eastern churches is uh, through our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So, so, so they make a much more explicit declaration. Why do they do that? Well, because in history, in the East, the divinity of Christ was questioned in a way that it wasn't in the West. And so our, our, our language of prayer develops slightly differently, and they're responding to a different kind of concern. But we're 1,500 years removed from those fights. Most people in the West don't believe Jesus is God anymore. Most Catholics, as far as I can tell, don't seem to understand this is actually like the point of the religion. Um, and so I use it a lot because, I, th- you know, it's like Flannery O'Connor says, when the world's deaf, you got to speak through a bullhorn. For, for people that I want to go back, because okay, we're, we're coming up on Trinity Sunday, for people that are too scared to even tackle learning about this thing, because I've come across people, oh, I'm going to fall into heresy if I do. I just, you know, I'll just take it at face value what, what the church teaches on this. I mean, is that okay at this position, or should we should we be trying to understand this tr- more? So, does everybody need to go out and buy graduate level books of Trinitarian theology? No, of course not. But the but the the fact that we have a Sunday that's set apart on purpose to focus on this, the prayers of Trinity Sunday um, are really old. Like that Mass is very very ancient, and for most of the Church's history. That mass, the prayers of the mass will celebrate this Sunday, were just the default prayers for every mass that didn't have its own proper day. So there, there you know, wasn't like a Tuesday of the seventh week of ordinary time. There was just, you would celebrate the mass of the Holy Trinity. And, and to be honest, I think that was probably smarter because it showed that that was kind of the default setting mm-hmm. for, for what we do. Now, there are reasons that the, the liturgy was reformed. I'm not touching that exactly. But the reason this matters is because I think if people want to understand the Trinity better— we simply need to engage the church's prayer more. And very specifically on Trinity Sunday, the, the church recommends to us um, reciting the Athanasian Creed. The Nicene Creed is the one we, we, we use during Mass. The Apostles' Creed is what we use at baptism. But the Athanasian Creed was developed specifically to answer this question of the Trinity. It's a little longer. It's the kind of thing that you, you would want to sit maybe before the Blessed Sacrament with or something. But if you want to understand the Trinity... Just look up the Athanasian Creed on your phone and sit in, sit in adoration for a while and let him teach it to you. Might be a really good way to prepare for the Mass with your family. Just Google it. Just Google Athanasian Creed. Athanasian Creed. I'm going to do that myself. Uh, he's Father PJ McManus, everyone. Trinity Sunday. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you, John. And there you have it, a, a great uh, setup for us going into the weekend. And, uh, you know, Deacon Randy Keel hit the, hit the, uh, hit the tee shot. That was a nice uh, chip from the fairway. And uh, we're going to be up on the green in the second half hour as we uh, continue our show today. Dr. Budmar coming up. He is the academic dean at Mercy College of Health Sciences. And, they're gonna, and John and him had a conversation around the power of the sacrament of confession. And uh, along with that, we'll have our saint of the day, another look at news, weather, and sports. But before that, let's go right now to our gospel reflection for today, Thursday, May 23rd, the seventh week of Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and their fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt becomes insipid, with what will you restore its flavor? Keep salt in yourselves, and you will have peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Father Nick Smith, parochial vicar of Christ the King Parish in Des Moines. Isn't it amazing the lengths to which human beings go to seek medical care for our physical bodies? We have all kinds of medical procedures in this day and age with the kind of technology available to us. Any joint can be replaced. Any surgery pretty much can be done. Any valve 
Any organ can seemingly be replaced if needed. It might be painful, but it, we do these things to save life, precisely because we value physical life. If we're willing to go through so much pain to put ourselves on diets and sacrifice so much for the health of our physical bodies, why aren't we willing to do so much for the life of our soul? Why is it that we're not willing to cut off our hand, pluck out our eye, symbolically speaking? Why is it that we're unwilling to put away occasions of sin for the health of our soul? This is exactly what Jesus is talking about in today's gospel. And if we're unwilling to do that, well then, our soul is not going to achieve the health that it needs to enter the kingdom of God. Let us ask God to send his Holy Spirit upon us this day that we may fight temptation, that we may fight for our spiritual life just as much as we do our physical life, that we may keep salt in ourselves and be purified so that we may enter the kingdom of God. May God bless you and let us continue praying for each other. Catholic Radio, connecting listeners to Christ every day with people like you. Hi, I'm Julie Carlson from St. Ambrose Cathedral in Des Moines, Iowa. Thanks for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from independent realtor Chris Foster. Chris has served clients with everything real estate throughout Iowa since 2019. 641-891-8178 or online at the number 4 saleia.com. Throughout history, our Lord has shown us that He is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. Experience these wonders for yourself as Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Vatican International Exhibition, Eucharistic Miracles of the World, at Good Shepherd Catholic Church in Jackson, Minnesota, now through May 26th. Learn more about how you can bring this beautiful panel display to your parish, school, or faith-based organization by calling 515-223-1150 or visit iowacatholicradio.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. Deacon Mark Campbell in for John Lee Nitt. Leonetti today, uh, along with Brady Graham, Deacon Tony Valdez. Uh, great start to the show. We're going to make our way through the second half hour, but we want to let you know that tomorrow's show, you're going to make sure you, about, uh, you join us. We're going to have Grayson Dahl, co-founder of Prairie, Prairie Fire Ministries. And uh, I know that uh, many of you are familiar with the work that they are doing. Uh, in fact, you know, healing ministry is one of those things that, uh, that is really getting a lot of uh, attention because people are, are discovering the power of, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit and the uh, power that we have through our baptismal graces uh, to, uh, to to pray with and for one another and how God can heal us through uh, through, through many of those experiences, uh, reaching into the recesses of our lives to uh, to, to bring about healing. And they're going to be uh, we're going to have a, it's going to be a two part conversation. So he'll be on uh, that conversation will take place at 715 and 745. Of course, John and um, Grayson had a chance to meet up just before John left town. And the topic is going to be discovering the power of the Holy Spirit. So join us tomorrow at uh, for, for the entire show. But uh, that conversation will take place at 715 and 745. We'll also have Father Reed Flood on to uh, talk about our Sunday gospel reading. Of course, this is a, a place where Father Andrew Winschittle, who's been a longtime spiritual director of Iowa Catholic Radio, has provided some reflection. Uh, we're going to be introducing on occasion uh, some different priests to provide us some insight on uh, Friday mornings and be, it's for your benefit as well as ours, because, you know, we have so many blessed, uh, you know, priests within our diocese and throughout the state. And I say our diocese, the Des Moines diocese where uh, I'm a member of, but, uh, you know, even, even going to the conversation I had with uh, Father Joseph down at uh, St. Mary's in Oskaloosa yesterday, which resides in the in Davenport diocese. As we grow into becoming Iowa Catholic Radio, we're going to bring be bringing you more of these voices of uh, the wonderful priests with, throughout our diocese. But tomorrow, Father Reed Flood joining us in the first, uh, that first segment to give us a preview of the gospel for the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Before we go further uh, into a look at news, weather, and sports, let's go to Deacon Tony Valdez for a prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, 
seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Tony. Let's take a look at uh, news that is making headlines. Our news this morning is brought to you by Skeffington's Formal Well. You can learn more at skeffingtons.com. A Tennessee judge yesterday ruled to prevent the foreclosure and sale of the Elvis Presley Graceland Estate. The Memphis Estate, which had been scheduled to go to auction today, can stay with the Presley family, with the judges accusing the company trying to sell it of possible fraud. Last year, Nocity Investments and Private Lending said it loaned Presley's daughter, Lisa Marie, $3.8 million in 2018, using Graceland as collateral. The company said failure to repay the loan allows it to foreclose on the property, submitting a notarized note as evidence of the loan. Elvis's granddaughter, Danielle Riley Keough, who owns Graceland, sued to block the sale, calling the documents counterfeit and the company fake. The notary public named denies ever overseeing a document signed by Lisa Marie. The company, represented in a written statement by a man named Gregory Nossany, lacks a physical address. And following the judge's ruling, the company has withdrawn its claims. Pope Francis has recognized a miracle attributed to the intercession of Blessed Carlo Acutis, paving the way for him to become the first millennial saint. The recognition of the second mir- miracle attributed to Acutis's intercession makes it possible that Acutis could be canonized during the Catholic Church's 2025 Jubilee year. In a decree on May 23rd, Pope Francis approved the miraculous healing of a 21-year-old girl from Costa Rica named Valerie Valverde who was near death after seriously injuring her head in a bicycle accident while studying in Florence in 2022. Acutis, the Italian computer coding teenager who died of cancer in 2006, is known for his great devotion to the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And ahead of the Indianapolis 500, the Indianapolis Zoo held what it refers to as the greatest spectacle in tortoise racing. Though the the contestants on the track were a lot slower than the race cars participating in the Indy 500, Wednesday's event was the 45th anniversary of the zoo's annual Zoopolis 500, which features tortoises with checkered flags across their shells as they race toward the finish line. For the Zoopolis race, the tortoises were temporarily renamed, taking on the names of professional drivers who will participate participate in this year's race, which is set for Sunday, May 26th. Uh, Helio, a tortoise named after the previous Indy 500 winner, Helio Castronovas, took the checkered flag at Zoopolis 500 and was greeted in the winner's circle with some fresh fruit. Let's go to Mark Amadeo now with more sports. In sports on your Thursday morning, last night, high school boys, class 4A, sub-state final soccer, and it was second-ranked Dowling Catholic punching their ticket to the boys' state soccer tournament next week. Dowling defeated Ames by the score of 5 nothing at Dowling Stadium last night in West Des Moines. The Maroons ranked second in Class 4A, improved their record to 17-2, and and they'll play this Wednesday, May 29th, in the first round of the boys' state soccer tournament. Also qualifying, number one, Johnston, Ankeny, Waukee Northwest, and West Des Moines Valley as five CIML teams qualified for state. Yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, all the Midwest teams were in action on Wednesday. In the National League, Atlanta downed the Chicago Cubs by the score of 9-2 at Wrigley Field. In Miami, it was the Marlins defeating the Milwaukee Brewers by the score of one to nothing. In the American League in Kansas City, the Royals defeated the Detroit Tigers by the score of eight to three, and in Toronto, the Blue Jays defeated the Chicago White Sox by the score of nine to two. In interleague play, it was the completion of a suspended game in St. Louis, and in Game One, St. Louis down Baltimore three to one, and in Game Two, it was the Cardinals defeating Baltimore by the score of five to four. And in Washington, D.C., it was the Minnesota Twins defeating the Washington Nationals by the score of 3-2. to Triple-A baseball yesterday, it was game two of the Iowa Cubs' six-game homestand. The I-Cubs defeated the Indianapolis Indians by the score of 8-7 to at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines, snapping a four-game losing streak by the Iowa Cubs. Game three of their six-game series is tonight, Indianapolis at the Iowa Cubs. First pitch at 6-30 at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines. And last night, game one of the Western Conference Finals in the NBA playoffs. It was the Dallas Mavericks defeating the Minnesota Timberwolves 108-105 to in Minneapolis. Dallas leads that best seven series one game to none. And with your Thursday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, 
I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And, uh, you know, Brady, it's not necessarily a slow news day, but I, I, I re- I expect some reaction from the, uh, the the tortoise story there, the the tortoise race of the Zooopolis Zooopolis Five Hundred. It nothing. You got nothing for me on that. I, I was just going to say, people don't realize how much fun we have at work. <laughs> <laughs> the sooner we can get these cameras, the better. Yeah, no, that's it's uh, <laughs> it, it's it's one of those things. I never heard of such a thing, but you know, there there's frog jumping contests and and, and, and other events that take place that involve animals and, and racing. This was a new one to me and i i I thought would uh you know we could have some fun with it we were definitely laughing yes (laughs) well weather weather today is brought to you by no laughing matter the weather (laughs) no (laughs) exactly weather today is brought to you by construction professionals you can learn more at cpcustomhomes.com for today we're looking at sunny skies highs in the upper 70s for tonight mostly cloudy conditions with showers and thunderstorms likely after midnight and lows in the low 60s chance of rain is at 80 percent and then on your finally Friday. Mostly cloudy with showers and thunderstorms likely in the morning. Highs in the low 70s. Chance of rain at 80%. Currently in Des Moines, 59 degrees. Ames and Marshalltown, 58. Fairfield, 59 degrees. Thank and you. That's yeah. your forecast. Sorry. Sorry. I would have Hijack you there. No, you to get to our saint of the day. That's just exactly can't, right. Here we go. Can't contain myself. This is your saint of the day on Iowa Catholic Radio. Uh, again, thank you, Brady. Our saint for today in the 10th and 11th century. They were dark days for the church, and partly because the papacy was the pawn of various Roman families. And in 1049, things began to change when Pope Leo IX, the reformer, was elected. He brought a young monk named Hildebrand to Rome as his counselor and special representative on important missions. Hildebrand was to become our saint of the day, St. Gregory VII. Three evils plagued the church then. Simony, the bearing and selling of sacred offices and things, the unlawful marriage of the clergy, and lay investure, kings and nobles controlling the appointment of church church officials. To all these, Hildebrand directed his former's attention, first as counselor to the popes and later as pope himself. Gregory's papal letters stressed the role of the Bishop of Rome as the Vicar of Christ in the visible center of unity in the church. He is well known for his long dispute with the Holy Roman Emperor Henry IV over who should control the selection of bishops and abbots. Gregory fiercely resisted any attack on the liberty of the church. For this, he suffered and finally died in exile. He said, I have loved justice and hated inequity. Therefore, I die in exile. Thirty years later, the church finally won its struggle against lay investure, and the liturgical feast of St. Gregory VII is celebrated on t- uh, May 25th. You know, the Gregorian, the Gregorian Reform, a milestone in the history of uh, Christ's church, was named after uh, St. Gre- Gregory today, and he tried to extricate the papacy and the whole church from this undue control by civil rulers. And against an earthly, ch- an, an, an unhealthy church, nationalism in some areas, Gregory has reasserted the unity of the whole church based on Christ and expressed in the Bishop of Rome, the successor of St. Peter. So today we ask St. Gregory VII to pray for us. Coming up next, we're going to have a conversation that John had with uh, Dr. Bud Marg, and he was our man up speaker, gave us a great presentation here uh, uh, just about a week and a half ago, almost two weeks ago now. Here we are. We're Friday's tomorrow already. But uh, yeah, two weeks ago, gave us a great presentation. That was well received, and the conversation that John and he had was over the power of the sacrament of reconciliation. Let's uh, take a short break. It is 743. This is the Catholic Morning Show. Stay with us. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Here's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines this Thursday, May 23rd. I'm Ann Marie Cox. One week from today is the annual gala for InterVisions Healthcare. Make plans to attend and support the Unplanned Pregnancy Clinic. Congratulations and thank you to everyone who left out non-perishable food for their mail delivery person recently. The Des Moines Area Religious Council sorted through more than 33,000 pounds of food that was donated through the Stamp Out Hunger food drive. Thank you. 
Biking for Babies provides a fun way to enjoy cycling while supporting pregnancy resource centers and maternity homes in central Iowa. This summer's ride begins with Mass at 7 o'clock at St. Luke the Evangelist Parish in Ankeny, followed by a ride on a nearby trail. Learn more at bikingforbabies.com. Again, that's bikingforbabies.com. That's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines. I'm Anne Marie Cox. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. Support for programming comes from Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, offering repairs, installations, and maintenance for the whole house, including heating and cooling systems and all things plumbing and electrical. Learn more at goldenrulephc.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Fitness by Design, your neighborhood fitness studio. Located in Des Moines, offering PH or fitness classes, private and semi-private training, beamer, and massage. Learn more at fitnessbydesigndm.com, 515-770-3844. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. With very little time to spare, let's go right now to the conversation John Lenetti had with Dr. Bud Marr. My next guest is the academic dean at Mercy College of Health Sciences and uh, also is the co-host of The Uncommon Good with uh, Bo Bonner. Dr. Bud Marr joins me. Do you get a word in with, with Bo most shows or do you just kind of let him take it? No, I'm I'm definitely the sidekick, which is fine with me. So I just try to – I'm like the, the salt that seasons your food, I hope. <laughs> Just sprinkle a little bit of butt in there, and That's we're all good. Uh, all right, let's talk about confession, my friend. And, and, and this is great because it's coming from a convert such as yourself. Give, give the listeners who don't know just like 30-second background of kind of how you came to Catholicism. Well, I was studying to be a Protestant pastor, so I was at Duke Divinity School back in the mid-2000s. And at Duke, to their credit, they had us read the Church Fathers, so I, I went deep into history. And it was through reading greats like St. Augustine, St. Ignatius of Antioch, that I realized the continuity between the apostolic faith and what we, we practice today. It took me some time, you know, to give up uh, the career path and things that I was on, but I'm grateful to God for the grace he, he gave me. When we talk about the sacraments, was, I mean, what, what, was reconciliation a, a sticking point for you as a convert, or did it just kind of click? It made sense. No, it wasn't. By the time I had made that intellectual leap or journey, I was I was ready for confession. And for me, it really has been a, a real blessing. I know sometimes I hear Catholics with mixed experiences. I think today it's mostly very, very good. And uh, for myself, it's kind of like maybe this is uh, – I hope this analogy is okay, but like going to the dentist, you know, that – that clean feeling that you sure. have after visiting the dentist that you can't get at home. Yeah. I think something very similar spiritually. Why Why is this sacrament so powerful? What would you say? I, you know, because some may say, well, what, what's so important? I, I got a therapist. I can I can get some advice and I can get it, you know, for an hour rather than for, for just a couple minutes. Why, why is this sacrament different? Well, whenever I think about the sacraments, my mind naturally goes back to my Protestant upbringing. I can't help but see them through that background. And, you know, growing up evangelical Protestant, you sometimes hear relatives, friends, pastors who say, there's no need to confess your sins to another human being. You know, go straight to the CEO, as it were. But I think, John, besides the clear commands in sacred scripture about the sacrament, There's a reality that for us as human beings, one of our greatest propensities is to self-deception. And so, you know, like the the human heart can just be pulled in all sorts of different directions. But to sit in a room and speak your sins out loud and to hear the words of absolution from a minister appointed by God, I don't think that can be replicated even, you know, it's, it's great to do an examination of conscience at the end of each day and to confess and and express your contrition to God directly. But I think in God's good providence, he gave us this sacrament because he knew how, unless we were confronted with another human soul, we may be prone to self-deception and avoid the sins that that really uh, wreak havoc on our souls. And and I think it's important, and you pointed this out first and foremost, this was uh, right from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. 
right? Telling the yeah. apostles in the upper room, the first bishops of the church, go now and forgive sins. That's the clear command. Those sins you forgive are forgiven. Those sins you retain are retained. Here's the authority that God gives to the apostles and the church on down. So that's the starting point here where the church gets this. I, th- I-, I want people to know that because oftentimes people may say, yeah. oh, well, th- this was a medieval invention, you know, by a pope. It- no, it's very clear and cut where the source of this lies. That's right. God is all powerful, all good. But throughout the Bible, throughout salvation history, he appoints human beings to mediate his authority. And this is nowhere clearer than in the New Testament when our Lord says to to the apostles, you know, the the keys to the kingdom of heaven have been given to me. He passes them on to St. Peter and, and, like you said, all the apostles. And then says, whatever you bind on heaven shall be bound on earth. Whatever you loose on heaven shall be loosed on earth. So it's all there. You know, there's not manuals for confession in the New Testament, but even in uh, the the book of, of James, he says, if you have these serious sins, go to the elders and confess them. So there's it's, it's woven throughout Scripture. What does the church say happens upon absolution? What, what takes place? Do we know? Do, does the church have anything, say anything definitive on this? Well, confession is really to deal with our post-baptismal sin. So baptism, as we know, washes us from the stain of original sin, but also is grace for all of our personal sins. But the fact of the matter is, just with rare exceptions in human history, we all stumble after baptism. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way that God continues to heal us from the sins that we commit. Now, I heard something very cool, John, and this recently, this is a small tea tradition. This isn't straight out of the catechism or anything. But you know where, have you ever heard like one of your children or a friend say, when I leave confession, I felt 20 pounds lighter or whatever? Sure, sure. And there's there's saints and mystics who have said that uh, a valid confession with true contrition is actually more powerful for dealing with demons than an exorcism. Yeah, I've heard that too. So losing that weight, there may be something quite literal to that where we're freed from any sort of... Um, demonic influence or oppression in our lives. And so that when we feel that, there's a reason that that's the case. What's the first step in making a good confession? The first step, I think, is really that examination of conscience, because unless you, you've put your life in a mirror and really face that directly, you're not ready to, to confess your sins. Now, going to what St. James says, that we have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. If we're just hearers, then we're like someone who looks at himself in the mirror, but then does nothing about, you know, his vicious, just walks away unchanged. Mm-hmm. And so that sincere contrition and a firm amendment to, to change your life and move away from your sins is necessary when you enter the confessional. How long should a confession take? Oh, man, you're going to get me in trouble on air. Three minutes. I'll say it. <laughs> Three yeah, minutes. I think I think this is a good point. You know, here in our own diocese, most times of confession are on Saturdays. I know there's a couple parishes here and there who, and thank God they do, do more frequent confession. But the fact of the matter is um, there's usually a line of us waiting for confession. And so, I, you know, spiritual directors have said there's a time and a place for spiritual direction, for counsel. When we enter the confessional, I think it's important to list, name, and number of your serious sins, and to wait for the advice from the priest, but then to keep moving with the act of contrition. It's not the time for a lengthy conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and the people in line are going to thank you on this. And I, I've yeah. you know, talked to people before. They've said, well, wait a second, but you don't know, I mean, how much I've been carrying around, or it's been 25 or 30 years. I mean, you could schedule appointments with your priest. My dad's done that before and said, hey, can sure. I have like 30, 45 minutes of your time? Because I just go, I want to talk through some stuff. My dad yeah. loves that time when he when he schedules a confession. Does it like once or twice a year? Now you kind of asked me about my experience as a convert for your journey in life. Like, has it waxed and waned? You're going to confession and your experience of that? No, I mean, growing up, like yeah. I, I always saw dad and mom go to confession, um, and so it, it became important. I, I would say probably when I was like a sophomore in high school was when I started okay. thinking like, oh, I've really I got to take this a lot more serious than I ever have. But, yeah, it's always just kind of been there. But that's also because, you know, when I read the lives of the saints, I mean, I, that it's confession is just littered all throughout their lives. They, every one of them took this just incredibly serious. 
Well, I mentioned the spiritual director, and I think that's important. If you can find someone, uh, especially a good priest in your life, who can work with that on you, because for, for different temperaments and personalities, there's things that we do struggle with. And so some folks, they maybe don't go to confession enough, but for others, they genuinely do struggle with scrupulosity and maybe overburdened by guilt for their sins. Mm-hmm. And that can keep us away as well. So finding that golden mean between not worried enough about our sins and then over anxious about them. How often should people go? Oof, you know, you mentioned the saints and the saints were great about going very frequently, some more than once per week. I think setting a goal of once per month is is kind of a baseline. But if you are able to be there um, each week, um, I think that's a great thing. And I've seen gains in my spiritual life by, by making that commitment. Now, some may say, wait a second here, Dr. Bud, each week? That sounds a little radical here. Yeah, you know, I again, there's probably a golden mean there. But I think, uh, you know, we have to confess our mortal sins. Yeah. But the saints really do encourage us to confront our venial sins as well. Now, I've had priests before where I've, I've mentioned things and they, you know, sort of said, like, that's probably not proper matter for confession. Again, we can be sort of scrupulous about some matters. Yeah. But beginning to think more critically about the small parts of our lives, um, it's, it's that deep clean that I was mentioning at the beginning of the inter- interview. You know, Mother Teresa would often say she was one of the worst sinners on the, on the, on the planet. And you see this in the lives of the saints. Padre Pio yeah. said this as well and many others. And, you know, I, I've oftentimes thought to myself, maybe they, maybe they were. And, and I don't mean that to say, oh, Mother Teresa wasn't holy. She's a saint. But the closer you get to the sun, S-U-N, the more you're going to, those blemishes, those small little sins, they're, they're going to shine. And, and, you know, just think of how close Mother was and how well she was able to see, which is why she went to confession every other day. <laughs> now, yeah. again, I'm not saying you got to go to confession every other day, but don't tell me it's too much when we got saints that are doing this as well. I'm, I'm really challenged by those testimonies. I was reading St. Therese of Lisieux recently, The Little Flower, yeah. and she said the more she grew in faith, the more she recognized her absolute dependency on grace. And I think, like, John, if you can think of a time in your life for our listeners where you, maybe you have turned away from God and you're habituated to sin, it really does have a way of clouding our mind mm-hmm. and obscuring our vision. So I think the saints... They were, in a sense, like more alive or more awake than the rest of us. They're really, like you said, like very aware of each sort of moment of their lives and movement of their hearts. Yeah. Hey, I've also been asked, you know, when does the, the nerves go away or when do you, you, you know, you kind of feel better about going? I, I would say never. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least for me, right? I mean, it, the, the, the conscience is, is alive and well. That's why you're going to confession. And there's probably going to be some nerves around that at, at any time. That's okay. Well, it's kind of, I compare it to being a great athlete. And, you know, you have I've heard interviews with quarterbacks who they played football for several years. Right. And they said before a big game, they still had those butterflies. And that's, that's important. That's a good thing. And for us, because we are dealing with wrongs in our lives and we know we've turned from God, I think like you're saying, it would we, we'd probably be in a bad place if we didn't feel a modicum of, of nervousness before the sacrament. <laughs> yeah, I think you're exactly right. I really do. Uh, Dr. Bud Marr, everyone, thank you for coming on, man. This is great. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again in the future. Dr. Bud Marr, you can hear his show along with uh, Bo Bonner, and uh, they are here on the Uncommon Good. Podcast it out, iowacatholicradio.com as well. Again, Dr. Bud Marr, everyone. There you have it. A great conversation to uh, take us into Friday. Deacon Tony, let's close with a prayer. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit come down upon all of us, protect us all from evil, and bring us all to his everlasting life. Amen. Amen. For uh, Deacon Mark Campbell, Brady Grimm, Deacon Tony Valdez, join us tomorrow. It's going to be a great show. Grace and Dahl will be on. Hey, be confident in Christ's mercy and his love today. Morning Show is a production of the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. To hear this and other programs, visit iowacatholicradio.com or download the Iowa Catholic Radio app.